okay, welcome, welcome to this month's chemical of the month. This chemical this month is going to be acetyl aldehyde. Acetyl aldehyde. So let's get our books and our charts so we can get started. So does anybody ever respond on acetyl aldehyde? Well, if you haven't responded to acetyl aldehyde, you know, remember what happens on hazmat calls. On a fire call, everyone's saying, hurry up, they're going to beat us in. On acetyl aldehyde, the same dude saying, slow down, we're going to get there first. All right? Because so we don't a, feel comfortable. That's a sign of lack of confidence. Lack of confidence. So right? has anyone ever been exposed? This is some pretty cool information about acetyl aldehyde. You ever been exposed to it? Anybody that's ever had a hangover has been exposed to acetyl aldehyde. Ethanol breaks down in your body to form ethanol, which is acetyl aldehyde. That's what gives you the hangover. And what we're going to find out about acetyl aldehyde or ethanol, it's a carcinogen. Hmm. So if you drink your whole life long and you get hangovers every day, guess what happens as you get to be my age? Cancer. You, you get cancer yep. and die. Yep. Mickey Mantle's one who died from alcohol. Uh, Ted Kennedy, I think, he might have died of alcohol. If not, it's, it's, it's a close call if he didn't die of aldehyde. But, but he, had, uh, he died of cancer also. Okay, so you got your book. You got your charts. So let's use this system, right? Step one of the system is size up. How do we size up? Above the line or below the line. So if you look at chart number two, you look for acetyl aldehyde on the chart. Uh, so yes or no? Is acetyl aldehyde there? Go to the there? A's. Go to the A's. Are you, I see aluminum there. Nope, I don't see acetyl aldehyde. So it's an above the line size. No, takes you to so above the line. First thing we do is we announce we are above the line. Remember, above the line gives us all the hazards, like 12 different hazards that are possible there. If we're lucky enough to go to chart number three and put it in a family, we can chop that three, those 12 hazards down. Sometimes two, sometimes three. So let's go to chart number three. A set. A-C-E-T, in that flammable carbon and hydrogen box. Do you see acet? Yes, I do see that it. That gets me to go down. So it's acet aldehyde. We use the acet, what's left, aldehyde. Go down to aldehyde. What family is that? Red 7. Is it a red 7 or a red 7P? Red 7P. Because okay. the family of aldehydes polymerized. But look, there's a new hazard on this chart that we just put on for red 7s on version 20. What's it say next to that, Chris? Forms it, peroxide. So it forms an organic peroxide. And what's the hazard of peroxide? If you look at chart, you look at uh, red 12. So this red 7 that polymerizes can also turn into a red 12 that blows up. So a pretty amazing chemical that we know is a carcinogen. All right, so now we go to the book. Acetyl aldehyde. At the beginning, was that page 3? Page 2. Page close, 2. Close, close yeah, enough. Yeah. The 3 minus 1. <laughs> right. Acetyl so, aldehyde. We said it was a gas. Go to the physical description. It says it's a... A color liquid or gas. Which one is the worst, worst case scenario? If you see a dorsal fin, is it a dolphin or a shark? It's a shark. All right? So this is, it's a liquid or a gas. It's a gas to prove differently. So even if it's a liquid, though, whenever I hear liquid or gas, that means it's a really close to the temperature that turns to a gas. So it's putting off a lot of vapors. What's the vapor pressure of this one? 740. 740 millimeters of mercury. Remember, 760 millimeters is when it turns to a gas. It's been so that's also, this close to being a gas. And 760 mil, if 740 millimeters of mercury is just as close as saying 60, it boils at 69 degrees Fahrenheit. So, so that means anything, if you're in an environment of this spill and it's anything above 69, you're dealing with a gas. So vapor pressure changes. Yes. As the temperature goes up, what happens to the vapor pressure? It increases. And what happens when the temperature goes down? It decreases. So if we're in the summertime, this is going to be a gas pretty much all the time. Okay, so let's talk about where this gas is going. So we look at the molecular weight. The molecular weight in the book says 44. What the hell does that mean? So we have to decide, is it going up or going down? And since the air weighs 29, where is it going? Down. 44 is what propane wears. Propane weighs 44. So which way does propane go? Down. Acetylaldehyde weighs 44. Which way does it go? Down. OK. So let's look at hazards. First, most likely hazard is going to be toxicity. So we look at the ideal H. 2,000 parts per million, and it's a carcinogen. Primary out of exposure, inhalation. So what type of cancer? Nasal cancer. So if this causes cancer, how much exposure do you want? Do you think if it's a 1,900 parts per million, life is good? Or would you rather have zero parts per million? So we want zero parts per million. So how do we measure this? Well, the first choice would be the PID. But I don't know if it works or not until I get to the book. I go to the book. I go under IP, which stands for ionizing potential. Remember, IP, if you flip the letters around, it's an instrument called a PID. But the PID that you have and that I have 
In this case, we have it here in our safe kit, which is the multi-ray. There's many companies out there that make them, but the bulbs are all the same. There's a handful of military teams that have 11.7, and the fire service we have 10.6. Now, I can look at the NIOSH guide, and I'll go over there. Joe, the IP is 10.22. So that tells me uh, it's a PID yes. When I say PID yes, the PID will work. So I have a toxic vapor in the air. I need to be able to measure it. The PID will work. Great news. Next hazard I look for, flammable. So there's two places we look for flammability. Number the one is LEL. Is there an LEL? I look in the book, it says 4%. Yes, there is an LEL. The other one, is it ready to burn today? Well, I look at flash point. The temperature of that liquid needs to be to become flammable. The flash point of acetylaldehyde is thir 36 degrees below zero. So what does that mean? It's pretty much always flammable. Hey, one of the things I look at now, Chris, now that the, we know that this is pretty much always flammable, I want to know how, how flammable it is. So I look at the LEL. The lower the LEL, the faster it gets to the lower explosive limit. Then I look at the range, well, the difference between LEL and UEL. The wider the range, the longer it stays in that flammable environment. 60%. So four to 60, so the range is 56%. So once I get to four, this is pretty damn flammable stuff. Yes. So, yeah. okay, yeah. so we got a, uh, a liquid or gas. Today it's going to be a, a liquid that is toxic. The, it's carcinogen. That's heavier than air. That's flammable today. Well, are there any other hazards? Does it polymerize? In the size up, we said that red seven's P. Does it P, Chris? If I look at the formula, there's out. no equal sign. If you look at it after 129, there's no P. There's no word inhibited. I go to reactivity incompatibility, the allergy box, and it says, note, prolonged contact with air may cause formation of peroxide. Is that polymerization peroxide? Forms of peroxide? Peroxides no. explode. It's, that's different, but it's, it's another hazard. It even says it there. Look, the formation of peroxide, they may explode and burst containers easily and then go undergoes polymerization. Yeah. So why doesn't it have a P in the DOT box? Don't ask me. If we wrote the book, we'd stick a P there. It does polymerize easily. It doesn't tell you what causes it, but easily is good enough for me. So I'm bringing a temp gun for sure on this one yeah, and to just, see if it is polymerized. And a, and a footnote that, uh, that I'll share with everyone. I'm not going to mention any name. I'll keep everything in anonymity. I did write a letter to someone high in the government that's involved with the ERG, and I never got an answer back. Why did this chemical not have a P? And they have their own definition, their reasons for it. Now, for us, we just care if it does or it doesn't, but they have their own... Science. Yeah, fake science. Right, right. <laughs> fake. All right, so the next thing, it forms a peroxide. Mm -hmm. So peroxides blow up. Well, how would you know if it formed a peroxide? That's if you look at red, if you look at red seven on chart three, go to the last column and you'll see KI paper. Uh, it's a piece of paper. This is it right here, white KI paper. And what color is that X on the chart? Blue. So guess what color this changes if there's a peroxide formed? It changes blue. So we'd be using this gently, since it may blow up easily. We're going to use this to see if it forms a, a peroxide, yes or no. Okay, so now we're cut, you know, more hazards. Well, let's see. Let's see if it's radioactive. All right, so you go to the chart, which is 161 to 166. The ERG's guide numbers for radioactive isotopes and transport are guide number 161 to 166. I go to the book, acetylaldehyde is 129. Yeah, so we did step one and step two to give us answers to hazards, PPE, and meters. So the hazards we saw here, this is a flammable gas with a range from four to 60. Who wants to wear plastic? So the best PPE for this acetylaldehyde for the flammability part is turnout gear. It's toxic, it causes cancer. What's the PPE to protect you from breathing SCBA. this stuff in? So we'll put our SCBA on. It polymerizes easily. Well, how will we know if it's polymerizing inside of a container? Temp gun. So we take the temp gun, and what would happen to the temp gun when it was polymerizing? As, as pressure increases, you're going to, if temperature increases, you'll pick it up with the temp gun. And we don't have PPE to protect us from a container blowing up, so we call that a red light. Back up. I mean, look, guys, look what it says rescue. here. It says here that a prolonged contact with air may cause formation of peroxide. They may explode in burst containers and easily, under, easily undergoes polymerization. So you better have a meter to tell you that it is polymerizing. Two things here will kill you. There's, this is a, one of the few How chemicals. Many things? More than two will kill you. Yeah. It, it'll explode and it'll polymerize. And, and it'll it's toxic burn. and it's a carcinogen and it's flammable. 
So, uh, so meters and PPE important on this one. I'd work turnout gear, SCBA, bring all of my meters, and the meters, and here's something about forming peroxide. Hey, Chris, if something forms a peroxide, do you want to get, get a container and shake it, no. kick it, disturb it? Shock sensitive. So we treat every chemical that forms a peroxide as shock sensitive, so don't screw with it. That can blow up right in your hands if you mess with it. So this is a pretty interesting chemical, uh, acetaldehyde. Chris, you got anything else to add for this chemical of the month? No, nope, I think we got about here. We got so it red 7P forms peroxide. It's flammable as hell. It's toxic as hell. It, and we're, we're wearing Turnac here and SCBA. Make sure you bring your meters. Stay safe. If you hit a red light, stop. There's no sense getting killed because somebody's got a leaking container. The only reason I would ever run a red light is... Save a life. Line of sight, not search. I see them, they're alive, they're dressed like this. We go in and turn out gear in SCBA, quick in, quick out rescue. Hey, what would we wear to fix a leak on this one, Chris? Would we wear a level A, would we wear plastic, or would we stay in turnout gear? Well, if I'd stay in turnout gear. If you're going to wear plastic, because whoever's coming to, and you look at the charts, will tell you that. If someone doesn't have turnout gear, they need to wear plastic. All we do is change the work practices, and the red light of 10% of the LEL goes down to 1%. So, so here's how would we do that? Easy to say. Hey, let's change the hazard. So what will we do? The first place I look to see if I can change flammability is solubility. It's hey, miscible. does this mix with water? If a chemical mixes with water, we can make it less flammable through dilution. And we'd prove it using our, our LEL meter. So if there was a release of a gas, you could take a fog pattern, and as you're applying that fog pattern to acetaldehyde gas, it mixes and it put it on the ground. How would you know that? The LEL sensors stays at what number if you're doing a good job? Zero. So that's a tactic we use once we get into the hot zone. But remember, pre-plan to make it safe. I know a hazard that can kill me, so let's plan. So if I get to the hot zone and I have a hazard that can kill me, I need to change it. So solubility is a great place to look. Okay, I think that's it for this that's chemical of the month. Good job. We'll be signing off from Kent Island, Maryland. Uh, we'll see you guys next month. Stay safe.